first let me address Harsha. I will take that request up ASAP. I think it's a very good idea. Let's give Harsha a really good big hand for suggesting it. Secondly, you know, I'm always worried whenever I come because for some reason, uh, every organization, maybe it's because I'm so good looking, every organization keeps promoting me. So, you know, I'm a director with the K KKR, they keep making me CEO, now they make me owner. Next time Shahrukh will ask me, who's the owner, you or me? So I'm always a bit worried whenever I come and I see my name. I say, it's not, I'm not, I'm just a director there. Actually, what I do in KKR is I've got a very subtle strategy and it's a very long-term strategy. What happens is that, you know, you watch Hindi films, you know, so if you see Shole, there's Amitabh Bachchan and, you know, Amitabh Bachchan's a hero and there's a villain and there's a director. So, you know, your heroes are the Gautam Gambhis of the world, the Shaurav Ganguly's of the world, the villains can be the opponents, the directors are the coaches. But guess who's there all the time, you know? Whether it's 1975 or 2005, every film will have a Ramu Chacha. You know, there'll be one guy, Sahab, Apka Chai, you know? And that guy will survive for 30 years because, you know, when you carry tea in the background, surviving for 30 years is not difficult. So when they say director, producer, all that, very good. I want to be the Ramu Chacha of KKR and I'm very happy being that. And Ramu Chacha stay around for a long, long time. Okay, if I'm rambling a bit, because it's because I caught a flight at 3.40 this morning to come from Dubai. I was supposed to get a better flight, but uh, as it turned out, I had to stay. But one of the things was that I just had to come here. And uh, it wasn't so much because I have a lot to say, because I'm like many of you are parent, but it's because I had a lot to hear and I just wanted to, wanted to come and talk a little bit about, you know, today Orko, Kaushik's son is 22 years old, my son is 11, and he's a differently abled child. And I just wanted to talk about the one or two things that I remember and one or two things that I've maybe not, not accomplished is a bad word to use, but come to terms with, which is very important. First, I'd like to, with all honesty, say I'm the wrong parent to talk. Because in almost every one of these journeys, the mother does, in almost 80% of 90% of cases, it's the mother who takes the brunt of what happens. It's the mother who takes the brunt of the amount of work it's a mother who takes the amount of brunt of, you know, pressure from the rest of the world. So, you know, it's, it's good for us to talk to the rest of the world, but, you know, not to acknowledge the fact that we do just 20% of it would be very remiss of me. So what happens, you know, I want to talk about this journey when you start off, the first thing that comes to all of us, and at this point I'm just talking as a parent, is disbelief. Hey, this is not true. From disbelief you move to anger. Why me? Hey, that's six billion people in the world. Why me? And then after a while you said, okay, it is me. And then you go to grief. And then you go through this whole grief and you know this thing. And then your fourth part of a cycle is that I've done the grief. I've cried, I've dried myself out. I said, okay, now it's time to do something about it. Okay. And I want to tell every parent out here, especially if they're early in this journey, that if you're not feeling the grief, allow yourself to feel the grief. Allow yourself to say that, yes, it is tough, it's very difficult, I don't know why they chose me. I don't know why they chose my mother, I don't know why they chose my wife, why we have to face this brunt. Just accept that it happens. And if you don't go through that stage of grieving, to take the next step of saying to do something about it, it is very, very difficult. And then, you know, you will come across situations where everyone has a cure, everyone has a solution. You know, it may be the kumbh mela, it may be tying a mannat. And the one of the things is there is frustration, but accept that at least 80% of the people who are trying to tell you those things are trying to tell you because they want to help. There are the 20% who are going to put you into cults, who are going to talk about Scientology, but 80% of the people who are offering things, even though you've heard it for the 37th time, are trying to do it for a particular reason. So that's the first part of what I want to say. The big lesson I learned was you know, when I started going out with my child, exactly what would have happened with Kaushik and so many of us is, I was so pathetically grateful when somebody would be nice to my son. I was so grateful that they would allow me to be in a forum where my child could sit down. I was so grateful when if my child made an inappropriate noise or he made a sound, he didn't, uh, they didn't react or they smiled and they said, it's okay. And the first thing I want to tell you as a father, stop apologizing. Stop apologizing. Don't apologize. They have as much of a right as you, as all of us. Stop apologizing. And 
Once you cross that step, na, you'll find the world is. You know, I used to take my son to his swimming pool and I used to say, "Can he swim?" You know, and somebody allowed him a little space. I'd be, "It's not. It's his right. He's just as much a right as any one of us have." So what? We mix different sounds. You probably sing music really badly, and you're really bad at math. So you know, if my son talks a bit differently or sounds a bit different, he has as much of a right to that swimming pool as you do. So the first thing as a parent, as a teacher, is stop apologizing. They have as much of a share in this world as you do, as I do, as all of us do. Nobody needs to apologize for them. The second thing I learned, and I learned it the hard way, and this is this is tough, and is it? It's 90% my wife, 10% me. Is expose. Take your kids everywhere. Take them where you want to. It's always tough. It's always easy to say that restaurant is familiar. They'll sit out there. These people know us, and it's good. No, take them to another place. Take them because there's somewhere you'll see the look on your child's face saying that, "Wow, you know, this is something new." Yeah, some things don't work out that well. But a, once you've stopped apologizing, it's not that difficult to turn around and say they have right as well. But that exposure that you give the child, not only are you doing your yourself, your family a favor by looking at new things, you, the people around you have a, have a right to know that they're different people and they have a right to know that they need to accept them as people like all of us do. So the two things I'd say, stop apologizing, expose them as much, as much, as much as you can. And I'd just like to end up by saying uh, a couple of things. One is that, you know, a lot of us, what am I going to do? You know, engineer, MBA, I'm going to make a lot, lot of money make three houses. Finally, what's the epitaph? What do we leave behind? It's the number of people we touch, it's the number of people we love, and the number of people we've received love from. And when you recover, look at those parameters and you look at what it is in the world, in those parameters, none of the children we talk about will ever suffer. They'll be as much as any of us, probably much more. So just go there. It's not easy, but you know, it, Sometimes, you know, it's not so difficult to dance in the rain. And having a journey like this is all about learning to dance in the rain and enjoying those raindrops. Thank you.